What is up, my beautiful people? Oh, it's so good to see you. I'm back in the chair, and you already know I'm talking about sex today. Today has been an eventful day. I went to go get a new frying pan and... Hello, my loves. My name is Kira Graves. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I am a content creator and an actor. I make a lot of queer sex ed. And today we are going to be talking about masturbation. This is an Ask Queer episode. You ask me questions on Instagram and I will answer them here. I'm trying to break the stigma surrounding masturbation. Why is everyone so shy? Just tell your friend you jerked off in the bathroom. I am not a sex expert, but I am queer. -a. So if that gives you enough qualification, then keep watching. <laughs> I'm gonna be answering these questions from my own personal perspective, and I am a female, so these are naturally just going to have a female bias. But I'm not a doctor, so if you have a real concern, go to a doctor. Well, I am a doctor, but I'm a love doctor. Oh, whoa. Enough of that. First question is, is it bad to do it multiple times a week, every week? No, honey. Masturbate as much as you want. Keep going for five hours. I don't care. Make yourself come like 10 times in a row. I don't care. How to not immediately feel shameful and guilty right after. So I totally get this. First of all, I used to be Catholic and I actually used to ask for confession and pray after I masturbated when I was like in high school because I just had so much guilt surrounding it. And I would feel like literally sick to my stomach after I would masturbate because I felt like God was disappointed in me. But in reality, God loves to see you having fun. God loves to see you have pleasure. God is an all loving God if you do believe in God. If you don't believe in God, that's cool too. I found that consuming a lot of like sex positive media has really helped me not to feel shameful around sex and masturbation. It helps to have friends and people you can relate to and talk openly about sex to and masturbation. That destigmatizes it a lot and makes you feel a little less icky about it. It took me quite a few years to feel comfortable about masturbation but just know it's an ongoing process. Don't be hard on yourself if you do feel guilty or shameful because it is unfortunately like a part of our conditioning that we were told growing up, especially for females and AFAB people. I personally think that masturbation is a deep way to express self-love. Why prevent yourself from experiencing that? Can I also just talk about how like there's this whole like weird thing about masturbating because People are like, it's disgusting if like, I think that I'm sexy or like I'm sexually attracted to myself. That's fucking fine if you are. That's fine if you wanna look in the mirror at yourself while you're masturbating. Just wanna put that out there. It's fine if you videotape yourself and then watch it over while masturbating. So don't feel guilty if you do do this. Do do, if you do do. How do you make sure your parents don't hear your vibrator? It makes me anxious. Totally get it. One thing that I used to do when I lived with my parents, or my mom, I never lived with both parents because divorce. <laughs> I recommend masturbating in the shower. You can also drown out your vibrator sounds with music, whether you're in the shower or not. Either make sure they're not home, make sure they're absolutely 100% sleeping. You can also get like a super silent vibrator. I'll do a little show and tell. I'll show you the one I use. This one is called G-Spot bullet vibrator by Jeju. It's just a bullet, so it's very tiny. It's great for beginners. This is what it looks like. This is not sponsored, by the way. This one I find does not have a super loud uh, vibration. Okay, so it's gonna sound loud if I put it up to the camera. But if I put it over here, can you hear this? With the door shut, I feel like you can't hear this. Next question, is it wrong if you masturbate while fantasizing about someone who isn't your partner? This is a good question, and it comes down to like your own personal morals, I feel like. It's really all about like the definition of what you would consider being unfaithful. Some people consider cheating only physical. Some people consider cheating emotional. Some people consider cheating even just like thinking about someone else. So I feel like it comes down to like, what do you consider consider being unfaithful and like what is the mutual agreement between you and your partner. In my opinion, I feel like if it's no one that I have an emotional connection to, but it's just someone I find hot, then I don't see a problem with it because it's all about fantasy. And there's nothing wrong with like exploring your fantasies and it's a different experience than with your partner and that's okay. Like it can be a different experience. It's allowed to be a different experience. However, if it's like your ex or something, 
something, then maybe you need to like dig a little deeper and be like, oh, does this mean something? Does it matter at what age you do it? I personally don't think that masturbating is wrong at any age. Oftentimes young kids like toddlers or whatever like to explore their bodies and they might start touching themselves at that age. And that's a very normal thing for kids to do. I think when I was around like five, six, I started touching my body and realizing, oh, this, got, this feels really good. What is this? I kept doing it until other people made me feel like I was wrong doing it. So I stopped it for a while and then I picked it back up when I was like in high school. However, if no one told me that it was wrong, I probably still would have kept masturbating like that whole time. I just didn't know that it was masturbating. I feel like sometimes words, like the word masturbation can have such a like emotional charge for people. So that's why I like to say self pleasure because that is also what it is. And I personally think that it's okay to self pleasure at any age. Next question. I feel like I'm trapped at the moment with having to watch or watch something, but I struggle with reading or anything like that. I just wanna not feel guilty or gross after. I totally get that feeling of feeling icky after watching and I almost feel like it depends on the media that you consume too. Adult videos that are made on OnlyFans or the creator is being supported monetarily, I feel better about watching if it's if the creator is getting value out of this. So sometimes in the past, you know, when I've gone on or just sites like that, I felt the energy of almost like, ooh, I, I feel like I shouldn't be watching this. It feels kind of weird to me. And I don't know if that's just me. I just care about like the well-being of the performer, of the sex worker. And I feel like that's the only way that I will consume. But you don't have to watch if you don't want to, you can just use your imagination. I think imagination is such a wonderful tool that we don't use enough. I feel like we were really good at using it when we were kids, but we sort of lost that muscle. It is a muscle too. The more you do it, you'll find that it's easier to imagine. I don't know if that answered the question, but that's just my take on, on that. Is it normal for my clit to hurt after I pleasure myself? I've never experienced it hurting unless I'm not using enough lube or if the the stimulation is too strong. There could be multiple factors going into this. First of all, I would say be gentle because there's a ton of nerve endings in your clitoris. So I find that going more gentle as opposed to more rough feels better in my opinion, is being very, very, very gentle with clitoral stimulation and use lubrication. Trust me, like so many people I feel like masturbate or so many AFAB people masturbate without using lube or like any of their own lubrication from their fluids and that hurts, like it hurts. This could be what's happening, I don't know. But if you're really concerned, I recommend going to the doctor. Next question, when I feel a bit turned on, as soon as I touch myself, I'm turned off. Am I doing it wrong? One thing that I've learned recently is entire body stimulation. Instead of going directly to the vulva right away, my body responds better when I start warming up my whole body to the feeling of touch, giving your breasts a little bit of stimulation, your nipples, there's a lot of nerve endings in there that are really pleasurable. If you lightly and use like oil or lube to stimulate, that feels really good. I recommend like taking your time before you go straight down there. Like she might not be ready. She might be like caught off guard. And then maybe that's why you're like, ah, and then you're turned off because maybe you go towards it in too much of an aggressive manner. I find that we have to respect our vulvas and our vaginas and our beautiful sexual organs down there. We have to respect them, be gentle with them, show them we care and love them, and not just masturbate for a means to an end or just to get her done. Get her done. <laughs> Did that answer your question? I hope so. Can someone please tell me how to use my fingers properly? I never get turned on and come using them. I got a lot of questions about like fingering in particular. I just wanna say that you do not have to use your fingers to go inside your vagina. I honestly find that clitoral orgasms are way more fulfilling and powerful. What I would recommend is like, first of all, using lube please. Because if you're not already turned on and it's not wet down there, it's not gonna feel good going in. Starting out, just try like your pinky and see whether your vagina is open to it. Sometimes when you, when you stick a finger in there, you can feel if it feels like very tight and compressed or if it feels open and expansive. 
So if it feels open and expansive, then go ahead, put another finger in or just keep going with one finger. And you can go slow at first. I recommend going slow, feel around in there. I've actually heard that a lot of people with vaginas don't feel a lot of sensation down there in the interior. I personally agree with this. I feel like I have a lot of numb spots in my vagina. So it doesn't always feel like much. If you just want to stimulate your clitoris, that is valid. How to know for sure if you've reached orgasm or not. How I would describe an orgasm is like a buildup of pressure and intensity and it kind of just explodes. Basically all an orgasm is is like a moment of intensity. Sometimes orgasms are very small and they kind of just last for a couple seconds and sometimes they can last for like 10 seconds. All orgasms are beautifully unique and perfect. Trust your gut instinct. If you feel like, oh, that is something I've never experienced before, that seemed different than the rest of my experiences, then maybe that was an orgasm. I have a lot of other videos on self-pleasure. I have a video about self-pleasure for beginners and I have a lot of other sex-related content. So I will link all of that below and put it in a playlist for you. If you really enjoyed this video, give me a like, give me a comment. Let me know what you learned from this video. If you learned something at all, I hope you did. I try and post videos every week, but you know, life gets in the way sometimes. I am also coming out with a new podcast, so that is very exciting. It's probably gonna be coming out in April, I wanna say. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I love you, and I will see you next time.